All right, teammates, I'm excited to be able to come to you guys this evening with um, a very, very powerful and important training um, to um, our business and your business as well. And uh, this is a training to show you the fundamentals that's involved to be able to help clients so you're impacting people that way and also for you to be able to make money in Primerica. And that is taking someone through the wealth builder, right? Or what we call uh, the wealth builder. Some people may call it the financial needs analysis, a consultation, it's all the same. What our language is in our base shop is that we call it the wealth builder. If you master this fund, not an if, but I'm sorry, when you master this fundamental, I promise you, you will be in a position to help as many clients as you can get in front of. And if you help um, clients, then that means that you're impacting the community. You're putting more life insurance protection in the community. Uh, for those people that are securities licensed, that means you're setting up more investment accounts. You're giving people more hope and more peace of mind about the direction of their financial future. And that's the power that you will have in your hands. But you have to know how to take people through the wealth builder in a proper uh, manner. And so what we'll be doing is we'll start it tonight. This is our training series, the wealth series, the wealth builder closing business series. We'll be covering this for the next three weeks. This is installment number one. And what a great way to start it off uh, the way we're going to do it tonight. And so with that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, right? And the wealth builder training right? Development, workshop skills, coaching knowledge, man, we got a lot to cover. So make sure that you're taking notes, making sure that you're locked in, that you got your distractions at bay and all of that. And let's lock in for the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour. So these are the topics that we're going to cover tonight, teammates. These are the topics. I'm going to go over what are the tools we use? What are the tools we use uh, for the client wealth builder, right? Because so, there are some tools. Um, also, I'm going to talk about What's the information, like what information uh, will you need in order to effectively be able to do a wealth builder? I'm going to talk about some keys to success when doing the wealth builder. And um, you're going to get an opportunity, check this out, to observe tonight the wealth builder being role played, right? You're going to get an opportunity to observe tonight how the wealth builder is done, and so I hope you're excited about that. We're excited about that. And so we're going to have a good time with this thing. And, um, and, uh, and just, just, you know, feel free to just take it all in. All right. So let's keep it going. And so let's, let's dive into that first topic, which is what are the tools we use uh, for clients' wealth builders? So here's the deal. The tools we use... Um, if you go to Virtual Base Shop, if you log in to Primerica Online, you sign in, there is a link up at the top that says Virtual Base Shop. You see it right there, right? If you click on that link, what it does, it takes you to uh, what can be considered our team filing cabinet, right? It's kind of like our team's page through Primerica, and this is what it somewhat looks like. All that good stuff. Yeah, this is this is what it looks like. And it has our scoreboard for the month. It has current news out there, where we are in the way of meeting our team goals for the month and all that good stuff. But uh, but family, what you're looking for when you get to the virtual base shop page, and you got to put in your social security number in order to even get to this page, right? It's just one of the authentication uh, steps that you have to take. But if you click on the resources tab, this resources tab up at the top of the screen, and then you click this link that says Base Shop Resources, it's going to take you to a page that looks like this. This is like our team filing cabinet. It has different scripts in there. It has presentations in there. It even has Spanish resources out there. Um, but what I want you to focus on, if you scroll down um, in, this, in, in the Base Shop Resources, if you scroll down, there is a section that says Wealth Builder, Financial needs analysis, right? And if you're following along with me on Primerica Online, you should be seeing this. And within that section, you have new mobile FNA companion sheet. That's something that's new, right? If you have not downloaded this sheet, you need to download you a copy of it, right? 
because this is going to be a very, very key piece to taking someone through the wealth builder, right? New mobile FA companion sheet and this right here where it says dimes quote sheet. You need to download that as well because that's going to play a, a very important role in being able to do an effective wealth builder. All right. Everybody got me. Y'all good? Right. And, um, and if you haven't already, if you don't have a copy of the mobile FNA campaign sheet, go ahead and sign on the virtual base shop and get you a copy of it right now. Right. Because you may want to take some notes directly on the companion sheet. So if you have the ability to be able to download it and print one off, I strongly encourage you to do that. Right. And so let's see what it looks like. The mobile uh, FNA companion sheet and the dime sheet. Right. There it is right there. Um, that's the section that you download them from. This is what they look like. This is the mobile FNA companion sheet. And what this is, this is a transcript of what to say when you're taking someone through the wealth builder. Similar to how we have the transcript to take someone through a winning presentation, how to effectively do that. Well, this is the version for the mobile FNA. Right. This is the companion sheet that you'll use when you take someone through that mobile FNA through the Primerica app. And we'll get to that. And then this is the dimes calculation sheet. Now, the cool thing about the dimes calculation sheet, uh, teammates, is that it's an editable file. Right. You can pull that thing up and type directly onto that PDF. You know, you could put a client's numbers in and it's designed to do that. So when you're sharing your screen, listen to me, when you're sharing your screen, the client can see you typing directly into that sheet. Everybody with me so far? All right. And so I already have my trusty mobile FNA companion sheet already printed out. I even printed mine out in color. Right. And so we got it. And uh, we're ready to rock and roll. And I think I have my dimes uh, uh, calculation sheet. Let me see if I can pull that bad boy up. Yeah, there we go. We coming. Yeah, this is my dimes calculation sheet. Let me share my screen with that. There it is right there. Just so y'all know, I'm not making stuff up. Man, you see how you can type directly on that? It's easy breezy lemon squeezy. That's it. And so it makes it really convenient when you're taking a client through the uh, dimes calculation to determine how much life insurance coverage they need. Both of those tools are on the virtual base shop, just so you know. They're readily accessible and available to you, right? So now let's get back into uh, the training and all that good stuff. And so now that's, that's some of the tools that we use to help clients get through the wealth builder. But there's other tools as well. You need to have access to the Primerica uh, app, right? And so you can get access to the app through your, your, uh, your, your tablet or your smartphone. Um, and so you click on the Primerica app, you have to sign in and all that good stuff. Now, let me throw this out there. If you are not licensed, if you are not licensed yet, then there's really not much that the company will allow you to do with this tool. If you are not licensed yet, there's not much that the company's gonna allow you to do with this tool because they want to make sure that if you're out there messing around with these tools and things like that, that the company wants you to be licensed. It just only makes sense, right? But my suggestion would be when you're doing a wealth builder for a client that you don't use your phone <laughs> and when you're doing that. What you want to do is you want to access the Primerica app through the website. So if you log on to Primerica online, uh, same place you went to get to our virtual base shop, uh, the link kind of adjacent to it, right next to it almost, you see where it says Primerica app, you click that link, right? And then this comes up, basically what you'll see if you did it through your phone. So this, this page will come up. There's a, a hamburger menu in the top left-hand corner. You click that hamburger menu, and then this menu option come up. You see Home, Turbo Apps, Primerica Now, Recognition and Rewards, sorry, Rewards and Recognition, Quick Quote, Contact, and all these different things come up. What you're going to click on is this link down here that says Mobile FNA. You, saw, you guys see that? Okay. You're going to click that link that says mobile FNA. 
And that's how you get access to the portal that allows you to do the client's wealth builder, right? The companion sheet that we're using follows along with the screens that you, you're going to see in the mobile f and I'm going to repeat that. This companion sheet, the reason why it's called a companion sheet, because it follows along with the screens that you're going to see when we go through the mobile f and And it's the verbiage that you say for each of the screens. And I'm telling you right now, teammates, if you follow, and, and I'm, I'm strongly admonishing each of you guys to follow the mobile f and uh, the Wealth Builder Companion Sheet, because it will, it, it will help you, help you get the job done, check off all the boxes, and close business, all right? And that's the main thing you want to be doing is closing business when you're taking somebody through the mobile f and Hey, Nick? Yes. Okay, uh, I just have something. Can you un unshare your screen and uh, give me access, please, to share my screen for you real quick? Yep, absolutely. Hold on just a second. Matter of fact, I'm going to make you a co-host, so you should be able to do it. How y'all doing tonight, teammates? This is going to be a great training. Uh, Nick, it, this is something that we all need to go over the Wealth Builder. This is something that we have that's very important. And so we did discuss that. But what we want to do first we can't go all the way into training without actually recognizing our regional vice president. Come on now, we can't go. I'm sorry, <laughs> we have to hijack your meeting because you're sitting up here pre preaching and we like, oh. Oh, oh, we're ready to celebrate first. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We have something real, real short for y'all. You and Rahima, really quick, that the team kind of came up and we want to do something for y'all. So just kind of watch and, and, and look at a, a little PowerPoint we did for y'all. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Come on, Rahima, you just in time. All right, y'all, let me start off. I don't know.
Man, yes. guys. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's hard to hijack your meeting. I'm telling you, we were trying to stop. How do we get in on this? Nice. <laughs> Not a day go by like another second without telling y'all how proud of we we how proud we are of y'all as a hierarchy. You guys have done so many things, and it was so many pictures. It's way more pictures than that to try to put in, but it's just awesome. Um, I'm pretty sure maybe somebody else wants to say something. And excuse the overlap of the music at the end. Andre and I, was try we were having a time over here trying to get into the meeting. So, you know, um, I'm just, I just hope you guys uh, like what we uh, did for you. Loved also, at the end, we loved it. At the end, um, there was a trophy. I don't know if you were able to see that. We did. We saw yeah. it. Yep. We did. I don't know. But let me show the team. So, yeah, just proof. Oh, that's going to play the whole thing. <laughs> that's okay. so, that. so, this is what we've ordered you um, as our leaders. Yes. That's congratulations to our leaders. Yeah. Nick and Rahima Bracey. And so, it's lo uh, love the proven movement hierarchy. So, we Thank just. You. Yes, we appreciate everything y'all do for us every Tuesday, every Sunday, in between that, because y'all, you know, anytime we need to pick up the phone to call you guys, y'all are there through text, through anything, um, always encouraging us, you pray for us, when we don't even know how to pray for ourselves sometimes, we get on this call and we're like, oh, I know I need to pray, and you say the right things, and it's like, oh, Lord, that hit home, <laughs> so we appreciate you from the bottom of our hearts. Um, I know somebody on this call else wants to say something. So is it okay for us to hijack y'all? Absolutely, like, man. Five Absolutely. Five five uh, yes. I, I'm we, not we have we have uh we have uh, surprised the the two of them, uh Nick and Rahima with uh shirts uh, they have they're wearing right now, and I'll put the pictures of your shirts in the group me uh, on the back of the shirts has their name oh there we go uh on the back of the shirts has their name and we all mm. surprise them with um some gift cards and so i'll let marquee fontenot uh kind of talk about uh some of the other things that were in the goodie bag but we dropped off a goodie bag earlier and took some video footage and so we're going to try our best to put the video footage in the group me and, and we're also going to put some of the pictures of our uh surprise visit when we dropped off the two hundred thousand uh, dollar balloons mm -hmm. uh, to their house earlier today, so um, go ahead, Queen, and uh, tell them tell them what, what, what tell them what they won in the bag. Tell them <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, 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 look, man, congratulations to y'all. Y'all know y'all family, but we was able, you know, we was able to bless our uh, Green with some amazing, nice amount of time with them. So you're gonna go Eddie V's and uh, Vic and Anthony's. Now we, we wanted to be able to provide these uh, these amazing shirts for them. Because you know we, we want to take ownership because we love y'all, but the most important thing that we want to say is when we look when we look at you guys as leaders, right? And I know Nick always tell me all the time, and always talk about things. He always says that those who deserve a turn will get a turn if they don't step out of turn. And now it's just they turn, y'all. And so we just want to make sure that um, that we let you guys know that we care for you guys, we love y'all, but we definitely we want to stay in turn. So we want to be a blessing and push y'all to the best. The best level y'all possibly go sky's the limit, and um, it is y'all open door season. And thank, thank you all you. so thank much, you. man. Thank you. This is this is overwhelming, <laughs> man. I'm telling you, this is beautiful. Thank you guys thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And um, and I'm I'm really speechless. And you know, um, I'm I'm a person. I might always be able to muster some to say. <laughs> I'm I'm. I'm at a loss for words, you know, in a good way. And um, my goodness. They, they, it's just, yeah. this is, I mean, we, I don't know. We know we're, we're, we are, we're overwhelmed. We're so humbled by the love that you all have shown. I mean, just day after day, just loving on us and really just, just your words of appreciation. We were super surprised today. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Surprise. And so um I love these shirts. Like thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Th
much. Thank you. We're just, oh, I mean, overjoyed. It's just a great time um, to be in the business. And we're so grateful to be in the business with this team. Um, you all, I just, I love it. I love you guys. And I'm so thankful um, just for everything. It's just, it's just a really great time right now. So thank you guys so much. And I just wanted to say um, thank you so much. We are ecstatic about what God is manifesting in your life. So if we all just keep our eyes on what's happening in their life as the manifestation of all those prayers that we love and enjoyed all through 2020 and prior to that, in Deuteronomy 28, it says, if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord, that he will cause blessings to come upon you and overtake you. So that's what you are sensing right now. The blessings of the Lord have come upon you and they're overtaking you. There's a place in God where you can be smothered by the blessings, where you have to say, God, I can't breathe. Give me a minute. So that's what's happening. And so just keep moving. Like Quee said, it's your turn. We're excited about it being your turn. And because we're all connected with you, it's our turn too. We just mm -hmm. have to work that plan. So we want you to know we love you and your cup is overflowing, but God has a wonderful saucer that will be you'll be able to lift up and pour it right back in that cup and let it overflow again. So just enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey and know that we love you so much, so much. Go ahead and pass the offering, y'all. Go ahead and pass the offering. <laughs> go ahead and pass. Go ahead and pass. We need to get the cash app up there, man. Oh, man, that is so, so awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. awesome, guys. We receive it. We receive we it. We do. We receive it in the name of Jesus. We mm -hmm. do. We do. And uh, I just want to. Oh, I wanted to add. Oh, go for it, Mom. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I want. I had to get myself together. I was so overwhelmed <laughs> by the video. The the video just took me. I mean, I knew it was going to come, but I didn't know how it was going to work its way out. And you just did a fabulous job. I'm over here tearing. I'm like trying to keep myself composed, right? I am just thankful that I could be called mom by you too, right? <laughs> because you two have just been an example for truly exemplified, you know, the servant's heart. You all have served us well. Um, we could call you like they said at any time. Um, Nick will fly out here, have flown out here to be with us. And we've been so appreciative. Uh, and I can say that we treated him royally. We fed him well. <laughs> 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 but um, we really appreciate your time and the sacrifice that um, Rahima has made as well. I've seen her on many occasions, you know, it goes out and she's taking care of the boys and, you know, we may say, well, you know, Hima, you know, things so she's just calm and like, she is totally his Nick's help me when it comes to supporting what they do as a business. A lot of partners can't say that, right? That their other spouse doesn't really always support it, but she definitely does. And I'm just so proud of you too. I think you work together so greatly. Uh, it's just really a perfect match as I see it. And I can always say that when I actually, I remember meeting Nick and I always loved him. I remember just giving him words of encouragement. He's like, I just really like the way you encourage me, <laughs> you know? But it was really wholehearted support because I, I just saw greatness in him. And I saw the two of their greatness is matching up together and, and really putting something great into the community. This is what we stood for growing up. We always gave back. And Nick, Nick, those two personalities just latched together and they are just look at which has been accomplished and what has been built because you've latched on to other people who run with the vision, who have a heart to serve the community, right? And really have an impact and make a distance. Uh, um, a difference, and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, <laughs> you know, we're basing it on foundational and biblical principles. That's our foundation. And so this is just awesome. This is truly a family. And when I'm doing my presentation, I'm really expressing that to people. And I'm not saying that, and I don't say that, I tell them just because I'm talking about my son and daughter, but as you um, get to know and you attend these meetings, you can see how everyone is supportive and everyone loves one another. And that's an example of the head, right? Because so that's where it really starts, right? The people at the top and how they really feed into us, we feed back into them and who connects with you all. 
And so I just want to thank everyone too for just pouring out your love on my children, right? Because a lot of mothers don't get to see things like this. It, <laughs> thank you. Man, thank, thank you, Mom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. That, is, that is beautiful, man. This is beautiful, man. You know, um, you know I, it was interesting is that, you know, the type of people that we are, we don't really seek out the recognition. We enjoy it, we like it, but, you know, there's some people that um, just in life and in this business that, you know, they just really you know, in an unhealthy way, fiend for the spotlight and the recognition and to be up front, say my name, me, me, me. And we've seen it play out. And I don't have any knock against those people, man, because to each his own, whatever puts a battery in your back to motivate you. But we've just always been people in the business to where we want to be acknowledged, you know, for our accomplishments. Um, but man, we're so concerned and we're so caught up and man, who are the people that we're connected to and are they achieving their goals and their milestones, right? And, and, and so we're always focused about you all's promotion, you all's getting money and, um, and, 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 and getting new licensed teammates and you know just trying to create new ways to make you guys feel special. So I call myself <laughs> trying to just, just do a little recognition for Raheem and I at the beginning, like, hey, this showed up on the website. And, um, and, you know, and, and didn't dance in the end zone like that, just said that, <laughs> but really turned it to the team and was like, hey, man, congratulations to the team award. And then I was going to shift on into training like, hey, that was that. Let's go ahead and move on. But I just thank you guys for pumping the brakes, for pumping the brakes and, um, and just having the sensitivity and the love and the compassion for Rahima and I to just tell us to stop and just, you know, just smell the roses for a minute and, and just really take in this moment to drink this in because uh, this has been a long time coming, baby. It's mm -hmm. been a long time coming. And um, and I appreciate that. I, 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 we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. Uh, because it wasn't until I saw all of these pictures, you know, from different pieces in our journey, um, it's kind of like a part of your life flashing before your eyes in a good way. And um, and it just let me see just kind of how far we've come, you know? Mm -hmm. The kids being born, and y'all had a picture of us in the hospital when I'm holding Noah when he was like a baby and things like that. Man, let me try to hold him right there right now. He'd be like, what you doing, right? I mean, they got such a vocabulary to be trying to talk back, but I remember holding him like that. Nasiah too. And, um, and I remember when, you know, I got promoted to RVP in the green jacket and, you know, and I had, um, um, you know, some roughed up glasses and I, I, needed, I needed to get some new glasses. And I, I mean, just, 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 just out here trying to make it, trying, like Steve said, just trying to be somebody, man. And, um, and lo and behold, you know, I was able to meet Rahima and, um, and she believed in me, you know what I'm saying? Even though I was not a regional vice president at the time. I was aspiring to be one. I was on my way to becoming one, but I wasn't one yet. And um, I was full-time in the business, um, you know, just trying to make ends meet, you know, just believing uh, that, you know, greater was coming. And, um, and you know, she, she, she believed in me. And, um, and we developed this partnership and this relationship uh, that developed into, um, uh, the love of our lives, and um, and now we have a family and a foundation to build on the, off of, and we we put God first, and um, and now you know we have an extended family and you guys, and I'm just praising and thanking God. I mean, it's just I don't know how to put it into words, guys. I mean, that's about the best that I can do right now. I'm sure I might have some things come to mind. Might be calling some of y'all later, but it's just what a feeling and what a joy, and uh, and we just thank you guys for that. I know y'all are going to send us the video. Um, man, it was so, like, there was so much history um, in that video. And so I can't wait to take the opportunity really just to take my time um, and go through it. It was just so many things flashing. And 
I just I thank y'all for pulling that together because I'm I'm super excited about about going through it. But the one thing that I'll just say right here is like when we start to look at all the years and all the time and when we're looking at the business, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun. When yeah, we look at the business side of what we do, you know, to, I mean, especially once we had the kids, most of our traveling that we do is, is all around Primerica, whether it be trips or RP meetings or whatever it is. Um, most of our travel and the only time we get to kind of be t- together is um, is on, on Primerica type trips. And so just the journey has been fun and oh, as we move forward i'm just any like when benicia got promoted rvp i was like look like these trips like being an rvp and taking these trips like get ready you know what i'm saying um and so it's just been so much fun and the the we get all these zoom calls and that like we just all we all get together we laugh together we have a good time together um and so i just i i i'm so I'm appreciative of each and every one of you. Um, even in this Zoom world, you know, it's hard for us not being able to connect uh, with people the way we used to because we grew up in this people. We're gonna, so a, a lot of us are going to grow up in this business, right? You, you know, the, the, the years pass and you, your age changes, but also you learn so much and you start to become a business owner and your mindset grows up. Um, and so, man, we just got to find, we just all have to stay connected. We all have to find ways outside of training like this to make sure that we're staying connected and that we're st- we're able to grow, continue to grow those family bonds. And so thank you guys again. Um, thank you so much. This has been, I mean, clearly I wasn't mm-hmm. ready. I was, uh, <laughs> I'm running around. I still got to go get my baby's big dinner. Um, and so I just thank you all. I turn my I turn my phone on. I listen to training, and I I got a million other things going on in the background. So thank you all so much for kind of pulling me in, um, and, and letting me be a part of this moment. Love you guys, man. Hey Nick. <clears throat> oh Rod, what up, Rod? Hey hey, I said hello everybody. I just want to take a minute, man. And now that you and Reem are present, to to congratulate you for the the achievement that you guys achieved. I mean. I've been since day one with you, Nick. I remember and, uh, you know, growing in the business. And then when you met Rehima and everything that you have accomplished, the team that you have built. I mean, I'm so really deeply, honestly proud of you, man. You and Rehima, you both do, do, you both do make a great team, successful couple, great family. I mean, you're just on your way to the top, man. So congratulations to you and Rehima. I'm so proud of you. Keep going. And uh, just to share a really funny story that <laughs> nobody knows, not even Rahima knows, I'm just going to say it. Even though all of you know Nick, he's so, you know, professional and he's so, he seems so sure about himself and answering and handling objections and all that. Well, Rahima, you didn't know, when he met you, he was so nervous <laughs> that I didn't even, even know it was Nick Bracey. You never knew. <laughs> But he was so we were in Dallas, you know, in a party yeah, celebrating yeah. whatever. This is gonna be a good story, yes. And, oh, you, you, none of you have any oh, idea. Yeah. Now, I remember Nick. I remember telling Nick, just go talk to her. He's like, ah, oh, no, how long? Wait, oh, how long? Wait, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> Anyways, long story short. I have not heard this story. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, so proud of you. Keep going. Keep inspiring us. And uh, that's it, man. Congrats. Man, Thank I you, love you right now, man. That's my brother right there, man. <laughs> that Thank is you. my brother. Oh, my goodness, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And I was, I was like, oh, man, him and Steven was like, oh, go talk to her. I'm like, Lord Jesus. Oh, it was, man. Awesome. Awesome. Man. Thank you. Oh, I just, I just want to say to both of you guys, thank you for just trusting the process. Um, even when the process didn't look like y'all wanted to look like, even when it got hard, you guys trusted the process. And because you trusted the process, we're here. Um, and if you guys would have let go, if you would have changed your minds, so many people would just miss the opportunity of what we have now, of being financially free, having more time with our family, and just helping our community. So because you trusted the process, because you know, when the process got hard, you worked the process even more, you guys are here. And I know, you know, it's gonna be more blessings. Y'all gonna be 
SVPs, NSD, what y'all gonna go to the top because you guys trust the process and you're gonna work the process until it yields the results that you know God is going to give you. So thank you so much for just trusting the process and being you and loving on us and encouraging us, even when we didn't want to, even when we got discouraged, you was like, no, you, you can do this. If I can do it, you can. So thank you guys so much. We love you. Me and my family love you. Y'all are family to us. Um, we love you guys. Thank you. Love thank you, Constance. Love, love you. you guys, man. Love you guys and your family, man. UT, Parker, and Jay, man. Just love y'all, man. For real. For real, man. So awesome, man. Oh, man, I'm full. <laughs> I am full. My gosh, yeah. man. Man, family, thank you guys so much. Um, hey, Benice, you're on mute. Were you about to say something? I'm sorry. I was going to say, um, anyone else before we go back to training? <laughs> 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 I'm sure someone else on the call wants to say something. Anyone else? Shy? Okay. All righty. Well, I guess. Uh, that there we go. Thank y'all. Constance got me over here about to cry too. So um, yes, thank you guys again for everything that y'all have done for all of us. Um, we're ready to go back to training though. I think. All right, <laughs> let's 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 get to. I I, I think I can do it. <laughs> thank you again. Oh my goodness, good man! Night. That was amazing. That was awesome. Thank you guys so much for that. Um. Man, what a blessing. I give all the God, I give God all the glory, honor, and praise. Um, and just for the way, I, I just want to give a special shout out to you guys. Um, just for the way that you always treated Rahima and treated my boys whenever you've been around them. And um that just means something, you know, to a person. You know, how do people receive their spouse, their life partner? And how do people receive their children, you know? And it's just, you guys have always just been just so affectionate and, and so um, nice and genuine, you know, towards our boys. And, and I just thank you guys for that. I know I'm the one that probably spends more time with you guys. And so I, I, I get to know you maybe a little bit better than Rahima. I know she has her own way of, you know, making those inroads with you guys. And she has a definitely connection with, a lot of you guys, but for some of you all, you know, you may not have had a chance to spend time around her. You will, amazing person. But I just thank you guys for just showing her, you know, just love and, you know, just respect and all of that because she loves and respects all of you guys also. And uh, we both do. And so just know that, just know that. And so with that being said, uh, guys, yeah, I guess we can jump back in the train. I don't even know where I left off, right? I mean, let me just share the presentation and see where, where, where we started it. Okay, all right, um, let's try this. Okay, here we go. I think I was talking about information. Uh, we need to do a wealth builder. We are talking about the wealth builder, right? Was that what we were training on, was the wealth builder? Okay, uh, yeah, we are talking about the wealth builder. <laughs> and so, um, yes, okay, so um, this is part of the equation. This is that piece of the puzzle that I feel that we need at this time to really master, man, and, and and to get, you know, this down, to get this down, you know, even if you don't want to be full-time or regional vice president in Prime America, you can make a bunch of money just using these concepts that I'm going to talk to you guys about in the next three weeks. But hopefully something stirs in your spirit and you do want to be a regional vice president because that's where you get all the spoils. You get all the spoils, and we don't want you to miss out on uh, the buffet that's available to you and settle for any kind of uh, anything less than that. And so um, this is the information that you're going to need to do the wealth builder. And if you were taking notes, this is the time to pick it back up and take those notes, right? You are going to need the client to have their gross monthly income, right? What is their gross monthly income? Now, this is income before taxes, Right. Um, and it does not have to be exact, just like you see here. It could be a rough estimate of their gross monthly income. Um, you also need clients retirement account balances. Hey, how much do you have currently in your 401k plan? 
uh, 403B plan, if they have a 457 plan, any IRAs, things like that. Let me throw this out there. You do not, you do not, you do not, I'm sorry, you do not need clients' savings account balances or checking account balances. That has no place on the wealth builder, right? You don't need those balances. Strictly retirement account balances. Things like 401k, 403b, 457, and IRA. I just want to make that clear because I know sometimes it can maybe be misconstrued when they say, well, you'll see it, what's your total savings? You're thinking that they're talking about not only retirement, but they're also talking about your bank savings and checking and money markets. No, none of that. If it's not in a qualified plan, that's for my securities license people or people in the securities license process. If it's not a qualified plan and a qualified plan means it's a retirement account, it does not need to be included in uh, the wealth builder, all right? If the client has a pension, what is going to be their estimated monthly pension amount when they retire, right? Now, we're not going to cover pensions and how to calculate that in TRS tonight. That's going to be next week. So if you want to figure out how do we factor in pensions and TRS, how do we do that? What's that count? Next week, we're covering that. I promise you that. And it's going to be simple, Simon, and you're going to learn how to do it once and for all. Um, if the client is age 50 or older, you want to figure out, hey, what is going to be your estimated Social Security amount, right? If they're age 50 and older, uh, you might want to factor in a little bit of their Social Security. Then also, how much does a client contribute per month towards retirement? We need that information. What are you putting away? And if their company matches, then how much is the client company's match towards their retirement? Because this is going to help us paint their retirement picture. And then last but not least, um, personal life insurance details, personal life insurance details. If they can put their hands on the policy, great. Have them bring their life insurance policies to the table if they can put their hands on the policy, right? But if they can't, they need to know the details about their policy, right? How much coverage are they covered for? What's their monthly premium? Is it a term or is it a whole life or cash value policy? Who's all insured? What are the premiums for there? Y'all get the pictures. They have cash value, what that is. And sometimes you may have to do a three-way phone call with the client to get that information if they don't have their policies, all right? And so um, somebody's asking me, man, what about job life insurance? You don't have to worry about that. The only thing you need to be worried about is killing the job insurance. They don't need to produce any details about their job insurance. Who cares, right? Because we all know that coverage through the employer is not real coverage, right? It's not a policy that that person owns nor controls, right? So we're not going to factor in something that can be um, in the wind like a vapor if or when they leave their job, right? It's not a policy that they own or control. And it does a, it, it, it's, it's a poor comparison piece because people get this jaded view that they can get $250,000 in life insurance for $6 a pay period. I want you to think about that. You know, you're paying $6 a pay period and you think that you got a quarter million dollars. Like, it just don't work like that. And so what you, your job to do is when you're taking somebody through a wealth builder, if they are dead set and stuck on their job insurance and they don't have, somebody's never bridged the knowledge gap to them about what, how job insurance really works, your job is to kill the job insurance through educating them about how it really works. Does that make sense, guys? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense, all right? And so just saying you don't need the details of it. Uh, next thing that we want to do is uh, let's talk about what are the keys to success when doing a wealth builder? What are some keys to success when doing a wealth builder? This is where you really want to lock in, right? Key number one, right? Guys, have the spouse or significant other present. They need to be there when you're doing the wealth builder. No one-legged appointments. It's no different than when you're doing that first appointment. You don't want that one-legged appointment because they're going to hit you with the okie doke. They're going to hit you with it. They're going to say, hey, man, it look good. It sound good. Let me talk to, and we'll get back with you. And you're going to miss out on an opportunity because 90% of the time, they're going to go back and talk to who this person is and they're going to mess up the explanation and that person is going to say, we don't need that stuff. We don't need that. I got insurance through my job. 
Oh, yeah, you're right. Then they're going to come back to you and tell you the foolishness that you just educated them about. Well, my husband said or my wife said we don't need that. We all cover through her job or his job. I just told you about the job insurance. But you didn't tell the other person about how job insurance works. And now you're dealing with a phantom that can't be taken care of. It's, a, it, 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 it's just a phantom objection. And, it, and this whole point that goes into the phantom zone. Some of my Superman uh, fans out there, if, if you're familiar with Superman 2, you had, you know, Superman, he fought General Zod and his, his guys are like that. And they was in prison on Krypton and they went into the phantom zone and they were just floating out there in the phantom in space for forever. And then a nuclear weapon exploded and it freed them from the phantom zone, but they were just out there for forever, just floating in space in this flat little little mirror type thing that they call the Phantom Zone. I know some of y'all didn't watch the, the original Superman 2 with Christopher Reeves and all that. I mean, I'm kind of dating myself. Uh, some of the young people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah, go, go rent the movie, Superman 2. He fought General Zod and, and his crew, and they was floating in the Phantom Zone. I'm telling you right now, teammates, you run a one-legged appointment on a wealth builder, your, your joint going to the phantom zone. It's just going to be floating out there forever <laughs> in prison. Like, it ain't nothing coming out of that. Like, if it does come out of that, thank God. Call me and let me know that, Nick, I did a one-legged appointment. We closed the wealth builder. The husband was on board. And let me know what your favorite numbers are. We're going to go get some lottery tickets because you got the grace of God. The favor of God is on you. We got to go get some lottery tickets because it just don't happen, y'all. It don't happen. I'm trying to save y'all the frustration. So that's one of the keys. Don't be doing no wealth builders without the other party present, right? Significant other. Make sure, this is the next key, the client is in a stable position in front of their device. Make sure the client is sitting in a stable position in front of their device on their camera, on their camera when you're doing the wealth builder. Listen to me. You don't need to be doing no wealth building with nobody that's out at the grocery store. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, Constance, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I'm out here at the grocery store trying to get some groceries in there. Yeah, go ahead, go to the wealth building. They, they got the cart. You looking at all kind of frozen meat. They got their camera all jacked up and everything. You seeing the ceiling and all that. They, they checking out. You trying to talk to me like, huh, what you say, Constance? Like, hold on, hold on just a second. Ain't paying nobody's attention. And you trying to literally take them through a wealth builder why are they out doing some grocery shopping? Don't do it. They driving home in the car. They connection all bad because they hitting dead spots in their car. And you try to do a wealth builder. They halfway paying attention. They honking their car because traffic is bad. Somebody didn't cut them off. And you literally try to do a wealth builder. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Right? So make sure that you tell your client, hey, I need you going to be in a stationary position because I'm going to take you through some things, and I need your full attention. I need your full attention. So make sure that your client is in a stable position. If they are not, reschedule. Reschedule, and hopefully you can reschedule for a later time that day. Hey, if they, I understand people get caught up at work. Hey, I'm running behind. Listen, we don't have to do 6 o'clock. Maybe we can do 7 o'clock. But push it back. Get them in a position where they can lock in and pay attention. Then you do it. I'm just trying to save you guys some time and some frustration. In addition to that, my field trainers know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Understand that you are the expert. That you are the expert. So please, please act like it. Please act like it. Don't let nobody pull out their little bag of knowledge and say, think that they're trying to tell you something about how to build a strong. No, you're the expert. You're the expert. Stand in your power because you standing in your power and sharing with them these concepts and leading them through the FNA, leading them through that wealth builder, it's going to bless them. If you let them take the reins, and tell you what they want, what they don't want, ah, this and the other and all that, because it can get away from you. And I'm speaking from experience. When I was a young rookie in the business, things kind of got, I let it get away from me. And you know what? They don't know how to drive. If you give your clients the wheel and the control in the wealth builder, 
then they're going to take you off to Palom somewhere. Nick, where's Palom? I don't know. It's some remote city somewhere. You don't want to be there. But your clients are having, Nick, what, what conference? Where you at? Nick, I'm in Palom. I don't even, I can't even come get you. I don't know where that's at. GPS don't even track that. Look up Palom. No, I'm joking, y'all. Uh, <laughs> so don't, don't let the client lead you to Palom. And it could be Palom, Texas, Palom, Pennsylvania, Palom, Louisiana. It's Palom's everywhere. And you'll end up there if you let that client drive. You are the expert. Please act like it because you will save a client's financial life if you do. Do not, do not, do not give life insurance quotes until you get the client's monthly commitment. I'm going to repeat that. This is the next key. Do not, do not give any life insurance quotes until you get the client's monthly commitment. Guys, the worst thing you can do is to pull the trigger too soon, getting excited, getting overzealous, just because somebody tells you they want to buy some insurance and you throwing quotes out to them left and right about how much coming you haven't even taken them through the steps to give them a framework of what these quotes mean. Are y'all with me? You don't know what their budget is. You don't know what their affordability is. People are trying to tell you things like, well, just show me some quotes. I don't know. Just show me something and, I, and I'll kind of determine what it is. No, we don't necessarily work like that. We want to take you through a process because there's an, there's an educational piece that goes along with this. And we want to do something that makes sense to your budget. So do not, do not, do not throw out any quotes until you know what that client's monthly commitment is, right? Default to quoting term now over custom advantage. These are two different products that the company has and offers in the area of life insurance. Let me tell you the difference. If you do a custom advantage plan for a client, it requires for that client to do a pyramid exam, which means more underwriting. They have to do the height, the weight, the blood, the urine, all of that, right? That's a little bit more tedious to get through the process. Now, sometimes you can't avoid the pyramid exam and you have to do custom advantage based on the size and the amount of the coverage. But if they're able to do time now, come on, somebody. I know Benicio over there saying, amen. If a person's cost is like, preach, brother. <laughs> if the client is able to do time now with their level of coverage, default to quoting them and offering them a term now plan. I know it's saying you'd be like, I'm going to try to get you all. Yeah, man, we're going to get you $200,000 coverage on a preferred rate. And then, yeah, I know I'm controversial what I'm saying, but I'm going to save your business on the back end. I'm going to save it on the back end. Default to term now. All right? And understand this. Next key. Follow the Wealth Builder Companion Sheet. Uh, it says to the closely. I, I think I was going to say to the T. I apologize for that, guys. But follow the Wealth Builder Companion Sheet closely. Closely. Have it next to you. Study it before you even do the meeting. Study it and just kind of get a feel for it. See what the language is in there, how the transitions go from section to section. Follow that Wealth Builder Companion Sheet closely because it'll keep you on track and it'll lead you to the promised land. You either want to be in Palo or you're trying to be in the promised land. So <laughs> this Wealth Builder Companion is designed to lead you to the promised land. And the promised land is where everybody wins. The client gets the help. And also you get the, uh, the, the, uh, the satisfaction knowing that you help them and you also get paid. All right. Before you begin the Wealth Builder process, before you begin, before you start into it, please remind your client of, the int of your intent to collect referrals at the end. Before you go into the wealth builder, please remind your client of your intent to talk about referrals at the end and get another commitment from them that it's okay. Because when you wrapped up that first appointment, you should have told them, hey, our only fee for service are referrals of people that you know that can benefit from what it is that we're doing. 
Do you have any challenge doing referrals? No, I ain't got no challenge giving you referrals, Andrea. Great. That'll be the last thing that we talk about when we get together and we do your wealth building. Fantastic. Show back up for the wealth builder. Okay, we're going to go and get into this. Hey, just a quick reminder. When we get through the wealth builder, remember I told you last week that the last thing that we want to do is talk about referrals. So I want to be prepared uh, to be able to cover that. I'm going to leave enough time to do that. Is that still okay? Great. Plant that seed because you only get, listen to this, you only get what you negotiate on the front end. You only get what you negotiate on the front end. If you go through all of these steps and at the end you want some, oh, by the way, who do you know referral-wise? That client might be like, I don't know nobody. Oh, I can't think of nobody right now. I'm not sure, right? Because you're hitting them with it on the back end. And you, you know who the blame is? You are. Because you didn't negotiate referrals on the front end. So you only get what you negotiate on the front end. So make sure that you plant that seed at the end of the first appointment and tell them that, hey, you don't do any cold calls, knocking on strangers' doors. We find that referrals are the best way to connect with people. We want to give you an opportunity to be a blessing and pay it forward. Do you have any challenge giving referrals? That's our only fee for service. Nope, you don't? Great. That'll be the last thing we talk about when we get back together, right? Some people might collect referrals on the front end. I just haven't had a lot of success with that because black folk want to see what you got first before they start turning over people in their phone. That's just been my experience. <laughs> um, I mean, other people might know that other magic trick. I just haven't mastered that magic trick. So what's worked for me is collecting referrals on the back end, all right? And so I want you to get very comfortable with that because they become the lifeblood of your business. And then, of course, family, we want you to close business. We want you to close business, right? Your whole objective when you're doing the wealth builder is not to give a client a lot of information and then they say, well, great, let me marinate on it and let's get back together for another appointment. No, your objective when you're doing the wealth builder is to close business, It's to close business right? That's your objective. If for whatever reason you don't close business, because guess what? Not everybody might not close. That's their prerogative is what it is, right? Then you need to know that it wasn't because you didn't effectively do something. Does that make sense? You need to know that if I don't close, it's not because I didn't do my job the way that it should have been done. They're not closing because they're not ready to close. I can live with that right? But the majority of the people that you sit down with and you do this process with, they should be closing. They should be closing. You should be writing life insurance. You should be setting up investments or connecting them with the investment advisor, all that good stuff to build them the strong financial house, right? If we're not closing, listen to this. If we're not closing because we're not doing our job properly, we're hurting families, I want you to let that sink in. If you're not closing because you haven't taken the time to master your craft, to do this process the way that it needs to be done and effectively, you are hurting families. I know that that's a jagged pill to swallow, but guys, it's the truth. And you got to look at it like that. And hopefully by looking at it like that, like, dang, I'm hurting families. Yes, you are. Hopefully that will force you to say, you know what? I'm going to get it together. I'm going to master this stuff. I'm going to be amazing at this stuff because I don't want to hurt anybody because I didn't do my job the right way, right? And so if, you have, if you've had appointments to where you, wealth builders, where you've known wealth builders and you haven't been closing, you had a lot of them, that means that you need some tweaks to your process. And these trainings are designed to come in and pull you out of Palom and bring you into the promised land, all right? And so um, I don't know if we have enough time to role play. I'm not sure. Um, can y'all let us go over um, about probably another, you know, if we get to 8 o'clock. Do y'all mind if we go to about maybe 8.15-ish? Would y'all be okay with that? Are y'all cool with that? Or, 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 or we got some people that's like, nah, man, I got a hard stop at 8 o'clock. Are y'all cool with this? Somebody give me some thumbs up or something like that if we can go a little bit longer. Um, okay, excellent. Because I, I think that, because I, I don't want to break this up. We got a little bit of momentum. I don't want to wait till next week. I want to go ahead and jump into it. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for that. I just want to get your permission to do it. 
And so, all right, so this is what we're gonna do. All right. And so the next thing we wanna do is do a role play. And, um, and man, I have the distinct pleasure of uh, being able to help me role play this whole wealth builder process. We got regional vice president, Coach B Walk. She's gonna help, me, uh, help us uh, get it rocking and rolling. And so um, before we get into the role play, uh, Coach B Walk, I'm gonna show them the scenario that will play out. Are y'all okay? And so hold on, let me let me reshare my screen and we'll jump into it, guys. And so uh, I'm gonna be the agent. I'm gonna be the agent, and um, Coach B Walk is gonna be this lady right here. This is Miss Teresa McIntosh. If you guys have been around the base shop long enough, you know that I use her and her profile a lot. Uh, she's not a real client. She's a fictitious client. These are not her real numbers. Uh, this is somebody that we just kind of made up, but she shows up periodically whenever we do these types of trainings, right? And so Teresa McIntosh, just kind of look here. Like, I mean, she's a single mom, right? And we help a lot of single moms. It's a lot of sing She's a single mom. She has an 11-year-old son. Look at them, man. They look great, right? Um, she's healthy. We love that. And she will actually qualify for a preferred plus. So we're excited about that. She has no health issues. Based on her height and weight and her history of health, she will qualify for a preferred plus, right? Um, and so let's look at her situation. She has one child. She has a son. He's age 11. We see her date of birth. We see her annual income. We see the age she wants to retire. We got her um, desired monthly income. We have her retirement balance, how much she has set aside for retirement in her 401k. Um, we, we have a monthly retirement savings. This includes the company match. Uh, we have Teresa's uh, life insurance. She has none on her. She has no life insurance coverage on her son. Um, this is reality, man. These are people that if you look at if you look at her situation and you look at her total annual income right here, we have her annual income about eighty five thousand. I'm guaranteeing you right now, guys. There's a lot of people that know people that are in this situation that they're making a high income, and you think that somebody making that much money per year, they look good, they probably dress good, drive good, they probably got it all together. But this is the reality. Teresa has no life insurance outside of her job, none. No life insurance outside of a job. And that's a lot of people in our community that are like that. She does have a mortgage. Her mortgage balance is $167,000. she has got some consumer debt, $35,000. She desires to pay 100% of her son's college education. Um, her income replacement piece, this will come into, um, this will come into um, you, know, uh, you know, importance when we do the life insurance piece. This is the lump sum she wants to leave behind to her son. And her monthly commitment for her wealth builder is $500 a month, right? Now, you won't have all of this information. Like a client won't fill out a questionnaire and send you all this information in advance. You have to take them through the wealth builder and you're going to get this information, a lot of this information from them as you take them through the wealth builder. But I gave it all to you guys so you can kind of see how it's going to show up when we, take, when we go through the wealth builder, all right? And so hold on a second. Let me kind of set my... My screen up, make sure that I'm still logged in uh, to Primerica Online and all that good stuff. And, um, and I'll be able to access it. Um, it's kind of running slow, so that means I might need to log out and log back in. You guys bear with me real quick. I'm going to log back in uh, to the website. Awesome sauce. Log in. Yep, getting there, getting there. Yep. Is this good so far? Y'all good? Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, here we go. All right. I'm getting there. Perfect. All right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And, um, well, I'll share my screen here in a minute. But Coach B-Walk, you ready to rock and roll? I'm ready. All right, awesome. And so, um, of course, you, Teresa McIntosh, I'm the agent. So I'll just kind of pick it up and uh, let's say we just jumping off for a Zoom and, and we got like about um, almost 40 witnesses. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, meeting with me today, Mr. Bracey. Awesome, man. I thank you, uh, Teresa, for allowing me to be able to meet back with you and just offer you what I think is going to be one of our finest services for you, our wealth builder, to help you build a strong financial house. Uh, and, you know, I think you'll be impressed with this whole process. I, showed, I, I said that to you the last time. And I'll tell you what, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it. So what I want to do is I want to share my screen with you. 
Um, yeah. I'll take you through that process. You'll be able to see everything that I'm going through. And so let me go here, scroll down, All right? Teresa, can you see my screen okay? Yes, I can see it. All right, perfect. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put your information in real quick. All right, you're here in Texas. Some preliminary things. So I'm spelling your name correctly. Uh, it's a K M C K. Yeah. Capital K. C K. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, Teresa, what's your date of birth? My date of birth is um, February fifth, nineteen seventy eight. Get out of here! That's my mom's birthday. It's on February the fifth. You good? Oh yes. Right. Good people, then. She's a good person. Absolutely, man. Good stuff, man. Awesome songs. Well, good to know that I'm I'm I'm, I'm reconnected with a good person. All right. So check this out. Now that I got that in. Um, what I want to talk to you about, and this is something that we that I kind of shared with you the last time, Teresa, in life, there are two major financial risks that we all have to manage. And that's either we're going to die too soon or we're going to live too long, right? Um, pause real quick. Guys, I'm following the mobile FNA companion sheet, right? And so if you got your mobile FNA companion sheet in front of you, this is the verbiage that I'm following, right, with Teresa. So just kind of follow along there. And this is what you would use if you're taking somebody through the mobile FNA, all right? All right, so Teresa, in life, we say that there's two major financial risks that we all have to manage. Either we're gonna die too soon or we're gonna live too long. Uh, dying too soon, what, that, what does that mean? That means that if you were to pass away, your family's gonna need some money to take care of your responsibilities. So life insurance is the best defensive strategy to have in order to mitigate that risk, but you need the right kind and the right amount. But then you have the other end of the spectrum, which is living too long. And Teresa, that speaks to the risk of outliving your money in retirement. One of the biggest fears that people have as they get close to retirement is that they're going to run out of money and be forced to go back to work and nobody wants to do that. Uh, so the best offensive strategy uh, to have is to have enough money invested. And so uh, because retirement is not an age anymore, it is a dollar amount. So what we need to do with your situation is to play offense and defense. And so we want to give you some peace of mind about either situation. How does that sound? That sounds good. Okay, something awesome. That, so, yeah, something that I've been meaning to look into for a while. So this is, this sounds good. Okay, perfect. Well, that's what we're going to do. So just, you know, I feel like I say, I think you're going to be impressed with this process. And so uh, let's get into it. And so, because uh, we definitely want to give you that peace of mind. So the first section that we want to start off with is the living too long piece. And uh, we're going to tap into the roadmap for retirement. Just like it says, it's resist is the best way to reach your destination is to make a plan and follow it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the longer you wait, the more you'll have to put away each month in order to reach your retirement goals. So the question I have is realistically, realistically, what age would you like to retire? And I strongly recommend to my clients that they don't mention an age any earlier than age uh, 60. Why? Because you cannot pull money out of a retirement plan prior to age 59 and a half without being penalized for early withdrawal. So if you do have a retirement plan or you set one up, um, I say uh, don't mention an age any earlier than 60. So uh, ask the question again, realistically, what age would you like to retire? Mm, let's say, um, go ahead and put 62. Okay. All right. I'll put 62. So when we say 62, check that out. That's 20 years from now. Oh, goodness. It's from now. <laughs> goodness. That's when people see that number, they're like, dang, that's far. But I promise you, it is not that far. It's going to be here like this before you know it, right? And so 20 years from now, you're going to be looking to retire. All right? So let's keep going. Let's talk about what is it going to take in order for you to be able to retire, right? And so... Um, Let's start with what is your gross monthly income right now? Your income before they take out taxes and all that. Can we do it by the year or by monthly? Which one? Uh, we, we can do annual. That's fine. Okay. We can do annual. Okay. So um, my annual income is 85000 Okay. All right. 85000 Got it. Now, notice that I'm taking a pause moment. Now, notice 
I put in her income. Click on annual. Um, yeah. So her annual income is 85,000. The mobile FNA automatically adjusted to monthly, right? Now, when it adjusted to the monthly income, it goes over here to says, hey, retirement goal. The default in the system is to make it 80%. What you're going to do is change this 80% to 100%. You all see how I did that? So you're going to change the default percent of income for retirement to 100%. But you're probably not going to leave it there. You're probably not going to leave it there. Just for the sake of the optics and what's showing on the screen, you're going to change that to 100%. Does everybody got me on that? Give me a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. All right, so let's jump back into the role play. All right. And so this is the question that I have for you, um, uh, Teresa. How much of that, because your gross, I mean, your, your gross monthly income, I know you make 85000 a year, but that works out to about $7,084 a month. Let's fast forward 20 years to retirement, your age 62. How much of that $7,084 do you think that you would need to live off of per month to be comfortable in retirement? And you keep in mind, 20 years from now, your mortgage will probably be paid off. Your son will be an adult. Um, bills will be less. Debt will be paid off. How much of that $7,084 a month realistically do you think you'll need to live off of per month in retirement to be comfortable? What would you say? Uh, let's say, I think like $5,000 will do good for me. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a great number. Let's put 5,000 there. That works out to about 70% of your current income, right? And so the next page that I'm going to show you is going to talk about the effect of inflation, right? Because a lot of times people don't factor that in with their retirement. Mm -hmm. Do you guys see how I did that? I didn't just click to the next screen. You prep your client to show them, hey, this next screen that I'm going to show you deals with the effect of inflation. Go ahead and prep them to let them know what they're about to see, right? And then you go to that screen. Okay, so let's talk about the effect of inflation. How does inflation affect your goal, right? Well, Teresa, due to inflation, the cost of items you purchase will increase. So guess what? Your income goal will also need to increase to keep up with inflation. Now, we're using an inflation rate of about 3%, which means that we're saying that the cost of living goes up by about 3% every year. So if you look at today's dollars, that $5,000 today, if you fast forward 20 years, is going to be equivalent to $9,030. Do you see that? Wow. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you right now, this is the number one reason, Teresa, why people run out of money in retirement, because they do not factor in inflation. They don't think that it's going to take $9,000 just to buy $5,000 worth of stuff. Can you see that? Hmm. Yeah, that's a huge difference. Yep. And so, um, but that's not all we want to show you. Because in the next screen that I'm going to show you is something that's called your financial independence number, your FIN number. This is going to be the amount of money that you're going to need to have invested by the age you're ready to retire to not have to worry about going back to work. This is basically your finish line. Are you ready to see that? Yes. And here it is. <laughs> this is your get down number, right? This is your fin number, right? What? Yeah, yeah. And so what this means is, is that by the time you turn age 62, you need to have $2,188,000 uh, invested basically almost $2.2 million for your retirement. Did you have any idea that you needed about $2.2 million? In I had no, listen, I had no clue I would need that much money. I knew it would be a lot, but not 2.1. Exactly. So let me ask you a question. Do you think you should, you, you should find this information out now, or do you think you should find this information out later? I'd rather find out now. At least I have 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, to be able to do something about it. And I'm telling you right now, that's one of the biggest concerns that people have is when I help them strategize for their retirement, they say, I wish someone had showed me this information 20 to 30 years sooner. And that's why it's so important for us to be able to give this information to you. And that's why it's important for us to connect with people that you know that can best by this information. And that's what we'll talk about when we do the referrals at the end. Time out. Do you guys see what I just did? 
I just reinforced that referral piece, right? I just reinforced that referral piece. And so, and then you say, well, great. Well, let me show you how we came up with those numbers, right? To get you that 2.2 million uh, as your FIN number. Right here, let me show you these assumptions. It's saying that when you retire, Teresa, you want to live off uh, an inflation adjusted $5,000 a month. You said that you want to retire at age 62. This is the life expectancy that the computer generated for you, right? It says that you're going to live to about age 85. Now, of course, you could live for longer. You could live for a shorter period of time. But the, the computer says, hey, this money will be able to last you 23 years in retirement. We're also assuming that before you retire, your money's going to grow at about an average 8% rate of return. Hopefully it does more than that, but at minimum 8%. And then during retirement, you want your money, Teresa, to continue to grow at about a 4% rate of return. Why? Because you need it to outpace inflation, which is 3%. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Okay, perfect. Now that we know what your get down number is, what we want to do next is see what is it going to take in order for you to uh, hit that FIN number, right? And so let's talk about how much do you have saved for retirement right now. So uh, what is your current retirement balance right now? This is any money that you have in a 401k plan, 403b, any IRAs that you have. What's the total amount of money that you have set aside for retirement now? Okay, I was able to pull that information, um, Nick, and it looks like I have a 228000 Okay, very good. Awesome. 228000 you have that. And... Mm -hmm. How much do you contribute per month um, towards your retirement? Uh, currently, I'm contributing 600 a month. Okay, that includes your company match? Yes. Okay. All right, very good. All right, check this out, right? And so what we're showing you is basically if you continue on this path, Teresa, you're on track by the time you turn age 62 to have $1,479,000. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, a little better than what, I, what it was at first. Right, exactly, right? And so this is us pulling out a crystal ball to show you exactly what your future is going to be. And so listen to me. I don't want you to look at that $228,000 just as $228,000. I want you to look at it as 1.4 million. So don't get any bright ideas of what you're going to do with that 228,000, taking money out of it, borrow from your 4K. Let that money live and continue to grow and work, okay? Uh, so that's the good news. You're on track to be a millionaire to have about 1.4 million. But here's the challenge. You need almost 2.2 million. So that creates a $709,000 shortfall. Can you see that on the screen? Yeah, I see it. Yep. And so now what we want to do, Teresa, is give you the answer to the question that most people do not know to ask. And the question is, how much do you need to be saving per month in order to hit your FIN number? And the reason why people don't know to ask it is that they don't know their FIN number. So we're going to give you the answer to the question that most people do not know to ask. And it's on the next screen. And here it is. So where you stand, you're on track to have one point, almost $1.5 million, $1,479,000 by the time you turn age 62, you're saving $600 a month. But, Teresa, to be on track to get to the $2.1, $2.2 million that you need to retire, you need to be saving $1,797 a month. And so what that does... That creates a shortfall. Somebody do that math. That creates a shortfall of about eleven hundred and ninety-seven dollars a month. Mm. I'm sorry, eleven hundred. Yeah, eleven hundred and ninety-seven dollars a month, right? Mm. Eleven hundred and ninety-seven dollars a month stands in the way between you being able to retire when you want to, or and not being able to do that now. There is some things that you can do in order to be able to make that number uh, more digestible, right? Mm -hmm. There's three options that you can do. You can choose to push your retirement age out a little bit further in the future, maybe not retire at age 62, maybe retire at age 65 or something like that, a little bit later date. Or you can reduce the level of income you want to live off per, per month in retirement 
or you can do a combination of the two, right? Do you mm -hmm. make any adjustments to either one of those numbers? Um, I, you know what? I work hard, so I don't want to <laughs> adjust that number. 62 is what it is. Okay, awesome. Well, definitely what I'd love to do is revisit something with you at the end where we might be able to talk about a way where you can make up for that shortfall. And I'm going to save that for the end as well. And so, um, but looking at this number, Teresa, I promise you, we're not sitting up here thinking that you got an extra $1,100 just sitting around waiting to invest. That is not what this exercise is about. But what it is designed to do is to show you that if you want to get that FIN number, you need to be saving and investing some more money. Can you see that? Yes, I do. <laughs> So let me ask this, if we can show you a strategy to where you can save and invest some more money and be on the path to hit your financial independence number more efficiently, would you be open to looking at that? Sure, I need to. Okay, awesome. So that's something that we'll definitely talk to you about um, a little bit later when we sum everything up, all right? Okay. Now that is the end, I'm timing out. That's the end of the living too long piece, dealing with retirement, right? You're not trying to sell an investment at that point or do anything like that. You're not trying to break out no paperwork or, or anything like that. You're not trying to go into a long drawn out explanation about Roth IRAs and annuities. Don't do it because it'll pull you off track. What you do if you talk about, hey, this is where your situation is, I'm not trying to say that you got an extra thousand dollars or so to spend or whatever their shortfall is, but you can see based on what we're showing you that you need to be saving and investing some more money. And they will say yes. Then you ask them the question. And how was it phrased on the um, um, on the sheet? It says, are you open to seeing an investment strategy that can help you achieve your financial uh, your financial goals faster? You heard me say something about more efficiently. But whatever that language is, all you're doing is just getting a commitment from the client to say, yes, I'm open to seeing some ways to where I can save and invest some more money. And you leave it there. Trust me, it's in good hands. You're going to come back to it when you're building them the entire financial house. Somebody give me a thumbs up if that's good. All right, perfect. Now you go into the part where you say, all right, Teresa, now we want to talk about the dying too soon portion of the wealth builder. And this deals with life insurance. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where you unshare your screen. You might want to write this down. Unshare your screen at that. Because this is the part where you need to be connecting with the client. Unshare your screen at that part. You show their screen that says dying too soon. And you say, all right, Teresa, now what we want to do is we want to talk about the dying too soon portion of the wealth builder, which deals with life insurance. Unshare your screen, look them eye to eye, and that's why they need to be in a stationary position so you can connect, right? And then you say, Teresa, let me ask you a question. When you think about life insurance, what do you feel is the purpose of life insurance? And listen, go ahead. Um, you know, life insurance kind of hits, hits home because of my the situation I was in when my mother was pregnant with me. And so anything ever happens to me, I want to make sure that my son is taken care of, that he never has to want for anything, you know? And so I want to make sure that my family is good. They don't have to try to come together and do any type of place for me. I know that the job insurance is not guaranteed. Like I said, same thing happened to my father where he was laid off. So just being able to make sure that I can rest in peace knowing that my child is taken care of and my family wants for nothing. You know, that's very important to me. I love it. That's, that's awesome. And I think that uh, that purpose you just described, spot on, is spot on. Um, and so let me ask this, do you own any personal life insurance already outside of your job? No, I don't. And I've been meaning to get it. So this is something that is very you know, I really do need to. And so I'm so glad that we're going over both um, the retirement piece and as well as the insurance. Okay. All right, well, let me show you some quotes. Hold on. Don't do it, y'all. Don't do it. Don't do it. See, see, y'all jumping the gun. Y'all ready to show the quotes. Girl, let's get you projected right now. Let me show you some quotes. You can get 500,000, blah, blah. See? Mm -hmm. Mistakes. 
this is the thing though i've always wanted the insurance but i never knew exactly how much i would need or how much that would cost me you know in addition to my job insurance and i know they would look very different and i'm not concerned about that i just you know would kind of need to know that information as well awesome well, tell you what, Teresa, I, I, I want to do something with you. I want to take you through something that we call the love test, because that's what life insurance is. It's a love transaction. Um, just like you described it, it's not for you. You want that money to be left behind to the people that you love and care about the most. Am I correct in saying that? Correct. All right, good. And so this love test is going to help us determine how much life insurance coverage, like I said, you need. Now, what you need and what you're willing to spend may be two totally different things. <laughs> but it's always our responsibility to take that educational approach and at least show you what you need. And so what we do is we take you through a calculation called DIMES, right? D-I-M-E-S. And I'm going to share my screen. And this is what you do, teammates. You have your DIMES sheet available and you share your screen with them. So I'm going to take you through a calculation called DIMES. And let's talk about each of these letters. The letter D stands for consumer debt, right? The letter I stands for income replacement. This is the most important part of the love test. So we're going to save the letter I for last. The letter M stands for mortgage. The letter E stands for kids college education. And the letter S stands for funeral services, right? Uh, and so this is what we're going to do. We're going to start with the letter D. And the question that I have for you is that, Teresa, if you were to pass away, God forbid if you were to pass away, would you want us to come back with enough life insurance money to pay off your consumer debt so that way that burden is not left on your family? Yes, I would. Okay, great. So roughly how much consumer debt do you have right now? I'm going to say about 35000 total. 35000 All right. All right, I'm going to time it out and park right there. Do you all see how I said that, how I asked that question, how I led her into that question? I didn't just ask her how much debt you got. What's your debt? How much debt you got? She'll give me that number, but she hasn't given me the commitment to use that as a part of her life insurance quote. So I got to ask her permission. If you were to pass away, would you want me to come back with enough life insurance money, not them, but would you want me? Yeah, see, y'all missing the psychology behind it. Would you want me to come back with enough life? Somebody feeling me, man, to come back with enough life insurance money to pay off your consumer debt. Why? So that burden is not left on your family. You got to ask the questions that way, guys. You got to ask the questions that way because it's going to lead you to the promised land. Are y'all with me? All right. And she said, yes, consumer debt is stuff. Then I asked her, well, how much consumer debt do you have? She says 35000 Great. I put it on the sheet. Teresa, we're going to skip over the letter I, income replacement, because remember, we're going to save that one for last. Let's go down to mortgage. Do you have a mortgage right now that you're paying for? Yes, I do. Um, my mortgage. Okay. Hold on a second. So if, if, if you were to pass away prematurely, would you want me to come back with enough life insurance money to pay off? your mortgage, so that way that burden's not left behind on anybody? Yeah, I want that paid off. Okay, what's the balance of your mortgage? Uh, currently, oh, about a, well, 167000 Okay, 167000 Okay, uh, now I know you have a son, and um, if you were to pass away, God forbid, would you want us to come back with enough life insurance money, money to pay for your son's college education so that mm -hmm. that burden would be on him or anybody else? Yes, I do. Okay, so the average four-year college costs about $25,000 a year. Now, I'll be honest with you, it could be more, it could be less, but the numbers we use is about $25,000. So if you're thinking about four years of college, that's a total of about $100,000 that he would need for his education. Now, would you want to be able to pay for his college education in full or just pay a percentage? Which would you say? Uh, let's say in full. Okay, all right, we'll say in full. All right, so put that there. And then the average funeral cost about 15,000. It could be more, it could be less, but we put about 15,000 uh, that way it can cover any funeral and final expenses. I'm gonna park right there. Y'all gonna get some people that say, uh-oh, my funeral ain't gonna cost that much. I ain't gonna cremate me. Y'all gonna get people that say that. 
You don't ask people how much they want for their funeral. You don't ask them that. You leave them in a professional way and say, hey, we're going to put $15,000 here for your funeral. My funeral ain't going to cost that much. That's fine. Yours could be less. It could be more. If it's less, it'll just be more money for the family, right? Put that $15,000 there. Y'all with me, all right? Um, it won't happen often, but sometimes it will. So, all right. Now, Teresa, now that we got that, now that leads us to the letter I, which is income replacement. This is the most important question in the love test. And let me say this, there is no wrong answer to it. There's no wrong answer to it. It's a two-part question, actually. First question is, if you were to pass away, Teresa, who would you want to be your beneficiary or your beneficiaries? Uh, my sister. You want to be your sister. And I'm assuming that your sister will probably take care of your son, correct? Yes, correct. We've already discussed that. Okay, perfect. So let's say God called you home and made you an angel, right? Mm -hmm. How much money would you want to leave behind to your sister for your son in a lump sum? Now, keep in mind, Teresa, you already have enough life insurance money to pay off your consumer debt, so you don't have to worry about that. There's also enough life insurance money to pay off your mortgage. You don't have to worry about that. There's enough life insurance money to already pay for your son's college education. And there's enough life insurance money to pay for your funeral and final expenses. But this is extra money that you would want to leave your, your sister and your son. This is basically the last love letter that you would leave them. This is some money that says, I love you guys. I know I'm not there, but I don't want you to struggle. Here's some money to go ahead and be able to live and enjoy your life. What's an amount that you would want to leave them in a lump sum? And there is no wrong answer. I'm going to say about um, 250000 Okay. That's a good number. And so now, Teresa, what we do is we add all of these numbers together, and that will show us how much life insurance coverage you need, right? So I'm going to add these up real quick, and you guys can add them up with me. If you got your calculator, all right? And so by adding all of these numbers up, the amount that I get is $567,000 in life insurance. Teresa, let me ask you a question. Did you have any idea that you needed about $567,000 in life insurance? I figured it was kind of close to it. Okay. Not... I thought maybe 300,000, but yeah, I'll do it off. Yeah, um, it's all good. A lot of times when we do this, um, this uh, dimes calculation, uh, people are kind of blown away, you know, mm -hmm. based on what their need is and all of that good stuff. But it's always good to go through this exercise because, you know, we want to take an educational approach with you. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, remember, you know, what you need and what you're willing to spend, it may be two totally different things. We understand that. Uh, but we believe the best type of life insurance to have, Teresa, is one that you feel comfortable paying. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we don't want to compromise the value uh, of the life insurance and just ensuring that your family is properly protected because that's the main thing. You want to make sure that that is done. Uh, so the question I have is, you know, just to create that balance, if we could show you a policy and let's say that you like it, and it makes sense, Teresa, in every way, and the premiums are actually something you can afford, is there any reason why you wouldn't get that policy? No, there's no reason. Okay, perfect. And so family, that question right there and the way you ask that question is so important because that helps sell the life insurance. When you say, hey, let me ask you a question. If I can show you a policy, and let's say that you like it, it makes sense in every way, and the premiums are actually something that you can afford, is there any reason why you wouldn't get that policy? If they say no, then you, you move forward. If they say, um, I don't know, I, I'm not sure, you stop it and you address whatever concerns that they have right there. Are y'all with me? You don't gloss over there and say, oh, okay, well, man, hopefully I can change your mind and keep going, no. That is your cue to say, well, hey, obviously you have a reason for saying that. You know, what, what, what are you thinking right now? I mean, because you said maybe you don't know. You know, talk to me about it. What, what are you thinking about? And get it out of there. Like, what's their hesitation? What's their trepidation? Are you with me? 
you know, they might reveal that, man, my mama got a policy on me. And I think I might be good over there and things like that. And then these are objections that you're able to overcome before you get down to the get down. And so if they're not saying, no, I don't have any problem. I, 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 there's no reason why I wouldn't get that positive. They're saying anything different than that. You pause right there and you address whatever their hesitation is. Please give me a thumbs up if you got that. All right, perfect. All right, so when they say yes, that is not your cue to start breaking out the quotes. Don't venture over the quick quotes because you haven't got a commitment yet. You have not got a commitment yet. And so the next thing that you want to do is get the commitment. And you say, well, great. Well, what we want to do, Teresa, is that we want to start transforming what we've been talking about into a reality. But we, do, we want to do it in a way that makes sense to your budget. So the question that we always ask, Teresa, is that when you look at your bills and your income, realistically, how much could you comfortably set aside on a monthly basis to not only have life insurance, but to also be able to save and invest some more money to create wealth? Now, some of our clients, they own a limited budget, and they can only do probably maybe about $100 a month, and that's okay. You can start anywhere. Most of our clients, though, are probably between maybe $150 and $350 a month that they can do. And then you have a fortunate few. They can do $500 or more. God bless them, right? Or there may be an other number that you're thinking about. But Teresa, when you look at your bills and income, realistically, how much could you comfortably set aside on a monthly basis to not just have life insurance, but to be able to save and invest some more money to create wealth? What would you say? Now, I'm going to time out right there. Before you answer that, but he's time out. You got to ask that question that way. And you got to repeat the question. Right? So you ask them, when you look at your bills and income, realize how much you come to set aside, blah, blah, blah. Then you read through the different options. Some of our clients on a limited budget, they only do $100 a month. Most are between $150 and $350. Fortunately, if you do $500 or more, God bless them, or other number. Then you come back and you repeat the question and leave it there. And now they're ready to answer. And so I ask the question, Teresa, what do you say? Um, I'm going to commit to $500 a month. Okay, you can do about $500 a month? Okay. Okay, excellent. All right, so before I move forward with that commitment, Teresa, I want to just make sure that that's, that's like the comfortable commitment because, you know, you say $500 a month because the commitment that I'm looking for, Teresa, is the amount of money that you say you can set aside per month that you can say, oh, I can do that. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to blink twice about that. That's totally comfortable in my budget. I don't have to rearrange things, cut back spending and anything like that. I'm looking for that 100% comfortable commitment because you can always increase it at any time. Um, yeah, Nick, I, I think that 500 is good. I thought about going more because I, I was going to tell you that I was going to do about 850, but then I thought about it. And so 500 is the number that I'm comfortable with. Uh, where I won't have to, you know, try to change it to a lower number over the year. Or I year. love it. So I'm okay. very comfortable with 500. Perfect, because that's the amount that we want you to start with. Because as you start this program, we want to make sure that it's comfortable to you and we don't shock your budget too much. But 500 is a fantastic number. And now what we're going to do is, uh, in Transform the Blueprint into Reality, um, I'm going to start with the foundation of building your financial house. I'm going to give you three different options for your life insurance. Um, and these three different options are going to cover different ranges. And, and, and as I present these options to you, I want you to just tell me which one feels good to you coverage-wise and cost-wise. Now, I'm going to black my screen out, and I'm going to go over to my, uh, my quote system. And it'll take me about probably maybe two to three minutes. And I'm going to come back with those quotes. And I'll be able to present them to you. You let me know which one feels good to you coverage-wise and cost-wise. Okay? okay? Okay. So um, this is where you would black your screen out. Literally black your screen out. And you mute your screen. And you go over into the quick quote. And you create the quotes. And what you're going to do is you're going to put those quotes at the bottom of the dime sheet, right? You're going to put option A, option B, and option C. Now, the way that I do this, I make option A the lowest option. I make option B the middle option. And then I make option C the most expensive option. Now, some of you guys might do it the opposite, where option A is the most expensive, 
B is still the middle, then C is the lowest. Whatever your prerogative is, you can do it that way, right? But the, the main thing is, is that you do not let the client look at you putting together the quotes because you're probably playing with numbers and you're trying to stay within a certain price point. You got their commitment in mind, $500. Now, by them giving you a $500 commitment, that does not mean that they want to pay $500 a month for some life insurance. I need you to hear me on that. That does not mean they want to pay $500 a month for life insurance. That's not what that is, right? When they give you a $500 commitment, I'm here to tell you, family, you probably don't need to be going over maybe $175, 180 or so for that life insurance. Maybe $200. i am just telling you from the psychological standpoint, when you present those options, most clients want to see a lot of their money going towards the savings and the investing. Are y'all with me? This is part of that psychology. If you want to sell that policy, you don't need to be quoting these astronomical quotes. Hey, here's an option for $300 a month. Here's an option for $270 a month. Here's an option for, no, don't do that. Do not do that. What you do, there's enough money on the table. What you do, is you present some sensible options. You present some sensible options. And so um, Auntie talked about, she's just a question, uh, why do you not use the life insurance section of the Wealth Builder? Because the life insurance section of the Wealth Builder doesn't allow me to give three quote options, right? And the way that they do their calculation for the dimes, the money is off. Like they, they factor in inflation with it, and so you can never get it to say the number that you wanted to say, especially when you're doing income replacement. They said they want to do 2000 a month for 10 years. It doesn't just, it's not straight math. They're going all this and you got to try to account for it. You're playing with the numbers and all of that stuff. And so, um, and that, that becomes a pain when a person, you're doing a single person, because that's what you do. When you do a single person, you do the lump sum option. When you do a married couple, you do the income replacement piece where you say, hey, if this person passes away, how much money do you want to leave behind? Or, or how much money would you need per month to replace their income? And they say, I'll need $4,000 a month. Well, for how many years would you need that? You do that for a married couple. For a single mom, you do a lump sum. Who you beneficiary? How much you want to leave them in a lump sum on top of everything? When you're doing the wealth build, I'm sorry, the, uh, the dimes calculation, the wealth builder, that lump sum option becomes a pain because it's not straight math. And it doesn't allow you to present three different quotes at the same time, the way that I like to do it, the way that I like to present it. And so the calculation sheet just makes it, you know, easy breezy for me to do it. And, um, and it's straight math. And um, in that way. And, um, and so that's why I do it that way. But, um, but what I'll do right now, guys, it's already getting late. I'm going to cut it off here. What we'll do is we'll pick it back up next week on the quote calculation piece. And I'll, I'll, we'll, me and Teresa will pick it back up. And then what we're going to do next week is we're going to do breakout rooms. And we're going to do practice drill rehearse. We're going to do breakout rooms and practice drill rehearse. And we'll do that for a minute to give some people a chance to practice taking uh, someone through a wealth builder in a practice drill rehearsal session. So make sure you show back up, study your, um, your wealth builder companion sheet. We're gonna upload this training to our YouTube channel so you can listen to it over and over again and how I'm going through it, right? But make sure that you upload, uh, that you listen to it and that you download the uh, wealth builder companion sheet and be ready. We'll have scenarios for each breakout room, be ready to take someone in a role play through the Wealth Builder. And um, the next week we'll pick up where we leave off, do the breakout rooms, and in addition to that, I'll talk about how to do the whole pension calculation and TRS or ERS calculation into uh, the Wealth Builder. We'll cover that as well, all right? Any questions? Any questions? Was this good? This was great, Nick, because uh, I know a lot of people have a difficult time with the wealth builder. Being able to walk through it and actually see it is something good, and then they actually have access to replay it. So this is very good. All right, perfect. Well, Nick, I thank you guys. Yes, talk to me. While, you, while you're putting a plan out there for pensions and IRAs and all that good stuff, 
Um, can you also make sure that you throw in a presentation to show how TRS for educators actually works? I remember when we did that years ago, it like blew my mind. <laughs> and well, so I know a lot of my cohorts would love to see that that really is not enough. Yeah. And so the, the great thing about it is that when you do the TRS or ERS calculation, they kind of all work the same. Um, I have a sheet similar to that dimes calculation sheet. I have a sheet of how to calculate TRS that you can just plug the numbers into. And it shows you how that math works and what it equates out to. So um, that sheet is not on our uh, virtual base shop, but it will be come next week. And so that sheet will be out there for the TRS. Um, any other questions? All right, very good, guys. Um, I just got one announcement and then we'll pray and get out of here. And so let me kind of go to that, that one announcement. Uh, remember, we are on the $49 IBA lick for this month. We got to get our recruiting rocking and rolling. And so in order to bolster the recruiting, check this out, guys. We have another opportunity meeting coming up this Saturday. This is open door season opportunity meeting, the takeoff, right? And so this is the flyer that we're going to post out into our team group meet tonight. Um, Andre, if you can go ahead and uh, get the flyer out there and, um, and the link, you know, to the flyer, that'll be fantastic. Guys, invite, invite, invite people to the opportunity meeting. Uh, we had one last Saturday. We did have some guests. We need to have way more, way more this coming Saturday. So this is your chance to have people sit in on a business overview to learn more about our company, our opportunity, and how they can get involved and make some money. Big shout out to Andre and Aunt Jackie for, you know, creating this flyer, man. It looks super dope and all that. And so let's make sure that we pack our opportunity meeting out with plenty guests this coming Saturday. Start putting that word out. The people who weren't able to make it last Saturday, get them there this Saturday. And, um, and in addition to that, as we got the op meeting come up, don't abandon scheduling your personal appointments. Don't be trying to depend solely on the op meeting. Let's schedule some activities, some appointments this week to get in front of people. All right. And so, um, but yeah, but that's the main thing, putting that information out there. Let's get people out to the opportunity meeting. Um, Y'all good? All hearts and minds clear? We ready?